Hello, everyone. To we'll call the meeting to order, we have three of us here. Right. So we have a quorum. It's a finance committee, and we're going to be reviewing the schools and public safety today. And uh, let's see. Um, any particular, anybody have to? I think we said that education go first. Okay. Great. Thank you. If you don't mind coming on up, just this way we. Uh, yeah, no problem. Thanks. I think I met you all, but I'm Heather Clash. I'm chair of the school committee. Nice to meet you. Nice See you, you again. <laughs> and, um, and Annie. Mm -hmm. you Annie. Great, so uh, what you have in front of you okay. is um, an assembly of information that lists for fiscal year 18 mm -hmm. our budget, um, and then as compared to fiscal year 19, what we're projecting as with some assumptions that are laid out for you. Um, I'm going to let Annie walk through this with you, but some of the things that we've just tried to highlight are at this point in time where we are now there are some things that we know and there are a number of things that we don't know and we wanted to at least point those out to show you mm -hmm. those variables that we are that are kind of fixed that we know okay this is a fixed variable this is the cost mm -hmm. and we know that now that definition versus those things that you know grants tuition um, they're unknowns but we plan for that and we want to at least lay that out so with that, Annie, I'll turn it over to you to walk okay. through. Okay. So the what you see at the very top line are total budget expenses. What you don't have in front of you, which you may be wondering, is why doesn't this look like the other budgets with line by line? The public hearing for the school budget, that public hearing will occur in April. And that's a line by line uh, budget presentation that's required by law. We advertise that in the newspaper, and that public hearing of the budget occurs at a school committee meeting in April. Um, also, another reason for that at this stage in the game, we've certainly been developing drafts of that, but um, it is unlikely, it is highly likely that there will be changes. And I'll run through what some of those changes are. Um, or what we what we might anticipate for changes. So we do have an estimated our total budget expenses for FY18, and that's at 8.367. And our right now at this moment in time, our projected total budget for FY19, which is roughly 8.5. That represents a change in dollars of 104,134 and 59 cents or a total change in terms of percent of 1.24% to total operating as of actually 223. This was prepared the Friday before our last school committee meeting. And then we have local contribution. The local contribution is the, the part that the town contributes. So this is the town's contribution, the money that comes from the town side. The way we get to local contribution is we take total operating expenses. One of the assumptions here is that this is an FY19 level services budget. And so we take our total <coughs> operating expenses and then we apply all of our anticipated revenues. We deduct those revenues from total operating and we come up with required local contribution. So the first revenue that you see there is circuit breaker. Circuit Breaker is a program through the state. It's actually a federal program and it passes through states. Circuit Breaker provides relief for districts to apply toward the extraordinary costs of educating children with special needs, primarily students who are attending out of district placements. The town of Hadley is responsible to educate every single child in Hadley who has disabilities up until their 22nd birthday in the least restrictive setting, and that could be a setting other than a public school. Circuit Breaker is a reimbursement that once a school district has spent four times foundation, which is slightly over $10,000, once a district has spent four times foundation, the state originally it is written that they would reimburse 75% of all expenses in excess of four times foundation. However, right now the legislature is thinking that that reimbursement will only be 65%. You see that I do indicate, and I'll get to it on the back, that I did speak with um, Representative Seibeck, 
and he's committed to trying to get 75 percent although I just asked him on Friday how should we budget and he said budget at 65 mm -hmm. um, so he's a hopeful pragmatist um, but he will do his best and I know there are others that our school committee has written to and perhaps even some select board members trying to encourage them to uh, fund circuit breaker at 75 percent the next is a grant nursing and health grant we're assuming that that will stay the same we don't have a guarantee uh, this helps this is applied towards some of our salaries for we have two full-time nurses and a part-time uh, nurse leader title one and title 2a are federal programs when you see the word title they pass through state the state um, we are anticipating a slight increase in title one and title 2a um, but again, that is, that's just a guess on our part. We will not have Title I and Title IIA numbers until much later this spring. We may not get the final numbers until very close to July 1. The 240 grant, we anticipate that this will decrease. Um, you also see we, we have a slight decrease in circuit breaker. One of the reasons that the budget does not show um, really a significant increase total operating uh, increase of 1.24 which is below the C consumer price index even for inflation is because we have seen some decrease in our out of district expenses but the way I explained circuit breaker to you when that expense goes down the reimbursement also goes down and the 240 grant is a grant that we get to also assist us with some of the costs associated with uh, out of district placements in special education, although we apply most of that to transportation. We are also, in some cases, the transportation of a student is more expensive than the actual tuition. We have that example right now. Uh, transportation, we have our buses here. We don't have a large enough fleet, vans or buses, to take students if they go to out of district placements. We don't have enough vehicles to get everybody where they need to go. Those costs can fluctuate anywhere from $248 uh, per day times 180 days, or you also have to add in summer school. They can be as high as $325 per day, depending on whether or not the van requires. Sometimes when they are wheelchair accessible or things like that, it costs more. That's what we use that grant for. School choice funds, we applied um, a much higher amount of school choice in FY18. Um, we budgeted for a much higher amount because uh, at the request of parents in the district we added an additional fourth grade classroom and the school committee wanted to provide that for parents but also uh, had voted that they would um, use school choice funds as required to fund that. Our, uh, we are applying much more pre-k revolving revenues next year. You see uh, we've increased that to almost $72,000 we certainly realize that the town is doing everything it can to support, uh, to expand and services and, and programs. And um, we looked at where we could also offset places where we saw revenues decreasing. Um, we the 391 grant that is a grant that supports preschool programming. The state has already told us that that will be entirely phased out. You see it decreased by fourteen thousand dollars from FY18 <coughs> to FY19. And uh, we anticipate it will be entirely gone after next year. The state has put us on notice. And the 262 grant is a very small grant that also assists with um, preschool and it supports some programming for students with special needs in preschool. I already told you that uh, their, the budget comparison is assumes level services. On the expense side, we, uh, because we have no other information, we assume that there is no increase in Smith's tuition. That would be great. They did not have an increase from 17 to 18. Um, and we had to base our assumptions also on the special ed education information that was available to us as of Friday the 23rd. The Smith's vocational tuition, slightly over $16,000 per pupil. If a student has an individual education plan or disabilities, we receive an additional surcharge for that. Uh, the circuit breaker projections, you can see um, we are projecting that um, we'll have a carryover balance and um, we're projecting- the only grant we can have a carryover balance, correct? Correct. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, they actually, and it's the only grant you can, and to some degree it's, a, it's encouraged so that you're not, uh, so you're prepared for whether it's a move-in or um, if a child goes into custody with the Department of Children and Families, if a child has, uh, DCF has custody of a child, DCF has the authority to make what's called a unilateral placement. They don't need to go through um, kind of a standard, typically placements are decided via team meeting. DCF has the authority to place a child in a school that they think is in the best interest of a child. And all the costs associated with that, the district just has to pay, whatever that tuition is. Uh, if a child, if DCF um, makes a determination that a child is better off living in a different community because that's the, the best fit in terms of foster family or placement, um, it's also the school district's responsibility to then transport the child from where the child is living. Sometimes those transportation costs are expensive because ch children are placed uh, well outside of the district. Um, so we can carry over circuit breaker. And we have our projected revenue. Again, you can see that that projected revenue assumes that 65% reimbursement. When I point out to you unknowns, <coughs> things could get better. If we find out the reimbursement is 75%, we would be able to apply roughly $30,000 more on the revenue side. When you apply $30,000 more on the revenue side, that would drop your local contribution to 128. Um, our school choice projections, again, these are just projections. The best that you can do with school choice is evaluate your existing school choice data so we know every school that um, students, all the students who are coming to us right now in FY18. Um, and then what we do is I take that spreadsheet that tells me every single student who's uh, coming to Hadley Public Schools and it tells me their grade it tells me how much tuition we're getting, base tuition. It also tells me if we're getting any special education increment for that child. So I, I look at all the children we have now, and then I simply deduct the seniors. And in these calculations, I did not add any additional school choice students, although I tell you on the back of this that we've had 13 queries. Assuming no special education increment, that would be an additional revenue of $65,000. I just don't know right now if those students will come here, and I don't know if more students will come here. So the 7117 balance we get from the town side, the town accountant. That projected revenue, as I said, um, backs out nine graduating seniors and does not assume any new <coughs> choice students. The special education increment is based on the enrollment that we currently have, assuming that that remains stable. What will apply to FY18, what we then believe our balance will be in uh, 630-18. And sorry, there's a typo there that FY19 revenue is actually based on FY18 numbers. I told you I'm looking at uh, right now. Our projected special education increment in FY19, if I assume no changes, that I have a stable population in choice, then I can do that calculation very quickly. Um, the budget assumes that the school committee is applying $625,000 of choice to the operating budget, and that leaves the, a projected balance of 439. Our total, the school committee has a policy that school choice should never be less than the total projected, the total grant revenues of the previous fiscal year. So that's what that total projected grant revenue is, and the 439 minus the essentially 341 is what brings the policy surplus. Do you have any questions about anything on that side? <laughs> it's just a day in the it's life of the school department budget. Sure, I do. Um, yeah. The um, what do you use? So the projected grant revenues. Mm -hmm. This that you have in the savings. What do you, what what is that saving for? Is that um, in case something comes up? And is that because we talked about having the other item that is going on the um, the town more uh, regarding the um, money that we are looking at putting in a stabilization? Yeah. So that this, with that. Well, actually, the way this is written, when you think about uh -huh. this. The, the school committee set a policy that said, no matter what, don't let that school choice go below all your grant revenues from the previous fiscal year for the reason I pointed out. These are our best guesses. Right. The state could turn around at any time and say, you don't get that money. Sometimes they're nice enough to tell us mm -hmm. this money will be gone in three years. Mm -hmm. Or that 
three ninety one grant actually was as high as it was over sixty thousand dollars. So sometimes we get notice. Sure. It'll be gone. Sometimes, like when our kindergarten grant disappeared, they said mid year, sorry. We, we, we wanted to, but it's not going to happen anymore, and so there's a mid-year adjustment. So that is the way that the school committee said, if these grants dry up, it's, it's we a have safety to... Net. Okay, so if we do a stabilization, how are you going to incorporate that here? I mean, right now, you, this is incorporated right, uh, without the stabilization that we're looking at currently. Mm -hmm. Yes, the okay. stabilization, and I'm just speaking sure. for... I'm just speaking for myself. At the end of the day, that stabilization, that warrant article is written in such a way that it requires majority approval by the select board and by the school committee. But generally speaking, um, those stabilization funds such as that are set up. Uh, recently, Granby had a, a, a town meeting where they were voting on, un, they, they called on the town to fund unanticipated expenses in special education. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so they, they had some out of district tuitions, I believe. They had some expenses they did not anticipate. And because they have absolutely no place, they have no school choice reserve, they have no place to go to. When that happens, they have to go back to the town and say, we have to pay this and we have to pay this now. That's, and, um, but the way it's currently designed, there's no way to do that without a town meeting vote. So if there's a stabilization fund, typically what happens is if there were an unanticipated expense associated with providing special education services, mm -hmm. first, as it's written now, I believe, but again, I don't know that the select board has, has approved the final language for what would be in uh, the article, but as it's written now, um, the school committee would vote to appropriate some of those funds specifically if there were an expense that we didn't anticipate in a fiscal year, a child wouldn't be a move in mid year. That's not. Uh, it would be a move in if they were. Uh, no, it wouldn't be a move in. If if we had a, an existing child who's already a student of ours, and it the team determined that the child needed uh, to go to school in and out of district placement, or if one of those uh, DCF placements happened, mm -hmm. so we didn't have money available. That's when you'd use the stabilization specifically for that. But I think what, with what you're asking, I mean, we should examine if there's separate funds mm -hmm. you know in addition to this what we have left in our um, school choice reserves if mm -hmm. you will then if our policy needs to be re-examined to uh, hold on to less of that then we should talk about that because mm -hmm. that's the interaction that i haven't seen to understand and present to the committee um, a recommendation or mm -hmm. what you know how those two interact but i agree with you that we shouldn't um, assume to continue on with the same policy, just status quo, if we have an additional um, special ed, you know. Well, we wanna, we understand that you'll have those um, once in a while un unanticipated mm -hmm. expenses. So, um, I think every year we've had to dip into school choice. So, every year. Okay, so, um, and, and uh, you know, other departments have it. We have, so many times we've had to dip into the, um, uh, finance committee even mm -hmm, mm -hmm. For, to help out other people mm -hmm. uh, so that that kind of stuff happens and, and we want to do it the right you know we want to help mm -hmm. and that's why I thought that was a great idea with the stabilization but then I was thinking that might offset some of the the school choice that you're holding right. on to because you're you're nervous about you, you want to make sure that you're covered right um, so I, I agree we should look at the two together okay. Um, and I think what's you know what's discouraging for me is seeing that there are grants going away or sure. that they aren't being funded in the way that they have been in the past okay. so for me that's that's really kind of the okay I, I'm comfortable knowing we've at least got these reserves but now with this new article on the yeah. table we should talk about how the two interact yeah. right but I think that um, if that allows us to apply more to the budget if that's if that is really where we see it then we should talk about what is feasible in the first year and whether we want to start out with something and with the idea that mm -hmm. future fiscal years we can examine um, in light of new grant information. Sure, and I, would, I, I realize you're, you're going to be losing grants, but at the same time I was hoping that down the road there might be new grants and I was, didn't know if you've heard of any. No. Nothing. And I, I'm not being intentionally pressured on that. No. There just isn't. Uh, 
there was a grant solicitation that I received. We received it before. It's actually something around school safety. However, it's very clear that the feds would like a research institution to be the primary partner and schools would be a subgrantee. So they're looking for research. They want a large research institution to do research around questions of school safety. So typically when people, as I am, when I'm excited and looking for grants, it's because I want to develop mm -hmm. programs. Um, but in this case, it's entirely focused on research. The other thing that happens with grants, um, and I'm not saying this to you, I'm saying it more mm -hmm. for the viewing audience, mm -hmm. is often I hear people talk about grants in such a way that they think, well, if you go out and get grants, it will decrease the budget. In education, the language is consistently, you may supplement, not supplant. So you, you are not, for the most part, to use grant funds for programs that if the grant weren't there, you would fund out of your operating budget. It's mm -hmm. supposed to be supplemental. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure you knew that, but sometimes folks don't. I just wanted to make that clear for folks. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in, you know, um, similar to where we all are, it's, it's we have to run mm -hmm. the organization almost like a business. Mm -hmm. And I know that what's happening with technology, you know, businesses have to redo mm -hmm. um, their, um, their plan. Mm -hmm. and, I know that you're also having troubles because of charter schools now, which we never had the, all these when we were kids, you know, there, there's a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Also, we're having, tr you know, less kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, I figured you, we need to, um, now there's, you, you need to come up with other creative things to offset. And, and um, I, I know you're probably going through this right now. Do you have anything that's close in the works or is there, or is it more long-term strategies you're looking at? I think we do both. I mean, mm -hmm. so yeah. we've, we've been looking at um, the capital plan over long term. So there were questions about how do we, how do we really examine the long-term needs, you know, year by year of the facilities, of the technology, mm -hmm. of all of those initiatives that are part of capital planning. So um, last year or the year before, we sat down and we came up with that five-year capital plan and infused in that are things like technology. Um, we've examined, actually in our last meeting, we examined the, um, the course offerings for uh, Hopkins mm -hmm. and talked about, you know, how do we add in things that are going to um, have people be excited about or mm -hmm. want to come here. And we talked with uh, one of the teachers there who has taken up the initiative. I think mm -hmm. we even have the flyers of how we can encourage more school choice in and right. coming in, okay. even though, I mean, right now we choice in more than we choice out. So we're already doing well on that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but thinking long term in terms of marketing, like a business, sure. uh, what we have to offer here and beyond things that folks may know about by reading about, you know, the sports teams and, and the band and things that are maybe getting more public um, facing mm -hmm. notoriety. Here we've added a personal finance course that's required to graduate and guess what? It's actually really applicable in life. <laughs> Imagine that. So, you know, highlighting that I think is a great idea to be able to talk about some of the real world skills um, between that and the technology pieces um, with the um, technology education, mm -hmm. robotics, programming, Again, real world skills. So we're definitely thinking long term. We we see it in terms of the census information. Um, Annie and your mm -hmm. staff have been amazing in presenting. Um, if not, you know, twice a year at least, you know, once a year, looking at uh, just the population and what does it look like? How are we how are we changing and where is it headed? Um, I think one of the things that we're very proud of, and you'll see it on the next page, is that. We have all, I think that this school committee, the five of us, are all on the same page in terms of not wanting to cut services, not wanting to look to reduce, um, but being sure that we can fill the seats we have mm. and maintain you know, the level of um, excellence that we have while also negotiating with the different uh, units that we have of educators to be sure that they then their contracts are addressed in such a way that we're able to, to maintain that excellence and keep them on. Um, and you'll see it at the top of the second page that we've negotiated three bargaining units at this point. They are done, these contracts, through fiscal year 21. For me, that's incredible because um, 
I've sat on a number of those committees. I've I've led those committees, and um, it's enjoyable when you get to the finish line and know that collectively we've come up with an agreement. That allows us to plug into this budget what we know in terms of contract um, deliverables, what we have to, what we owe in terms of um, salaries and increases and what we have promised. So having that plugged in, I think, is also part of the long-term planning and having it, you know, knowing, mm -hmm. being aware of what our expenses are going to be. Mm -hmm. And also some additional, so what you're looking at there are drafts of advertisements that actually were cleaned up a bit. They've gone to the Valley Advocate and the Amherst Bulletin, and uh, that'll be our first uh, advertising to try to help Yeah, that's the a, that was a question because I think you have some <coughs> great programs. I love that the uh, about the finance, especially considering I've always said that being in banking that we <laughs> right. don't teach our kids this stuff. Uh, you should see uh, these, as I said, in the Valley Advocate and in the Amherst Bulletin. Okay, great. And uh, we will look to do. Uh, we'll see how those advertisements work. We'll look to do more advertisements. Um, I'm also personally. Uh, writing and getting some materials out to every family that visited uh, yeah, that queried school choice and making personal phone calls to tell them this is a district where the superintendent calls parents. That doesn't happen in a lot of districts that uh, parents feel like I'm going to go see the superintendent and, and have that kind of immediate access. So um, we're work working really hard on personal touch with everybody who's expressed an interest. And also, um, in collaboration, and this will be for families in the weekly email, spoiler alert for the famous <laughs> weekly email, but we're going to pilot a program next year, and students who have some language proficiency in the first year, some language proficiency in Chinese, what Amherst found is that there were some students who were interested in returning to Amherst, and they didn't want to lose their language proficiency in Chinese. So Amherst has, some, has a school department budget that actually allowed them to add um, some resources around foreign language. Northampton's looking to do that, but the three superintendents, Dr. Provost, Dr. Morris, and I, have spoken about on a case-by-case -case basis, because we're small enough that we can uh, sort out how a Hadley student, if a student wanted to return to Hadley and maintain their Chinese language skills, we would be able to allow them to using a protocol such as Skype to participate on either campus, whatever schedule worked best for them. So that's our approach at Charter. We continue to fund our drama club and are looking to also include in some of our letters and some of the marketing materials we're developing, letting people know that this is a district where students, we have full-time music at the elementary, we have the opportunity for instruments, we have an active drama club. So we are very specifically looking at where we where students choose other than Hadley, mm -hmm. and um, tightening up the message on why it makes sense to choose Hadley. Great, great. So, yeah. I, 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 that's great. And, and then I did like the, um, I, I, at the Mother's Club, they did mm -hmm. a big uh, plug for your um, uh, weekly um, oh, email that you sent out. Yeah, yeah that yes. was great. Yeah. Right. Um, and My frustrated uh, life as a wannabe Pulitzer author, that's it, right there in the weekly email. <laughs> that weekly email is awesome. <laughs> People rave about that. That's a really wonderful thing. She sends out an email to all the um, parents of all the students and uh, keeps us up to date on what's happening. Yeah. I also think that, um, you know, even letting people know that we're involved with the junior firefighters. I thought that was a great thing that the school got involved with that. Yes, and I think that was in one of the weekly emails. I'm sure it was, and that's a good thing to advertise to as Adver well. Yeah, and, um, and also with everything that's happening with safety, okay. I thought it was a, one of the things I also uh, praise all the time is that we have a dedicated, we have an officer that all the kids know mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. at the schools. That's true. That is, that is a, an awesome thing. One of the things we have coming up that we just talked about too is we, we do a family engagement survey um, and so we survey the parents and, and uh, guardians and get feedback on mm -hmm. different strands of, of content. We've done this, this will be our third one. Uh, so we'll be working on updating the questions, you know, making, making sure it's not too lengthy. But, you know, in the past what we had gotten feedback on was more communication, more transparency, more information sharing that's not reliant on the backpack method. So, you know, that's, I think that, um, you know, I applaud the effort and the, the reaction to 
um, having a standing you know, weekly sharing of information. It is read, it is um, available, and um, even sharing information on the school websites too as, as we've improved that over the years. So I think we'll um, get another chance to take the pulse of the community um, this spring and figure out if there, you know, what the additional areas are where we can, you know, have room for improvement and figure out how to build that into our district goals. Great, yeah. And so we have in the back of this, if you turn it over, um, the knowns and unknowns. <laughs> we did, we hit on a lot of these. We have, so just quickly, I mean, Heather did speak about um, that all, all units, uh, so they're, they're settled through 21. So one thing that won't happen is you won't have any adjustments later saying, okay, now we've settled these contracts, how are we going to fund them? They're done. Mm -hmm. um, we do have one teacher retirement. Other things could change with personnel. That's why I want to reiterate. As of right now, this is the best budget that we have, but um, that could change because there could be other changes in personnel that we're not aware of at this point. You saw the reduction of the fund code and uh, school committee voted to increase uh, pre-K tuition by 5% at their last meeting. Um, and that's in response to the fact that we know that that 391 grant is going away. Um, so what don't we know? Uh, even Title IIA may be discontinued. Um, there was some <laughs> talk about that and then, and then it got quiet uh, again. Title IIA is combined with Title I on that first page, but Title IIA constitutes roughly $13,000. We're assuming it's funded, but that could change. Um, circuit breaker, I explained that to you. Special education, this is really important. Those cost estimates in special education are based on current IEPs. Um, but we do not know if team meetings would determine that a student needed a more or less restrictive placement, which could affect expenses, positively or negatively. I, ex uh, I explained to you about DCF custody and unilateral decisions. And if a district move, if a student moves into this district from another district before April 1st, then we have to absorb that cost. So this could change over the next 30 days as uh, um, if somebody were to move in from another district and they, um, for example, had, they were attending school at an out of district approved school, we would have to absorb that tuition in next year's budget. Career and technical education, I explained our assumptions there. Um, we took, we, we have a good idea of who's applied, who's been accepted. Smithvote gives us that information, so we feel pretty good about that. What we don't know is if they're going to do anything with their tuition, and we are estimating our special education surcharges. Um, your school choice, um, the expenses, this shows up on the cherry sheet that some of uh, you have reviewed. So the FY19 cherry sheet estimate is at roughly 308. Actual sending in FY18 is 308. It includes eight seniors. Those eight seniors are uh, sending expense of almost $43,000. So if the seniors graduated and no additional students choice out, that projection would actually be 265, 130. So similar on the town side, you do the best that you can with the numbers that you're given, but those two are subject to change because the cherry sheet is entirely an estimate, at least on the, on the school revenue expense side. The FY19 cherry sheet estimate in receiving, which are the revenues, is at 554. Actual receiving right now in FY18 is 554, but it does include nine seniors at 45,000. So the same thing, if no additional stu students choiced in in FY19, that projection would drop to the 509. We did have the 13 queries, and that's why I said that could be up to $65,000 of additional revenue, and we have no idea if there would be a special education increment associated with any of those children. We wouldn't. Uh, you have no idea if a student has an IEP. You can't ask that as a school choice for obvious reasons, so those are things we don't know. Charter tuitions. Um, so again, on your cherry sheet, there's an estimate of 769674 for FY19 and roughly $100,000 in charter aid for um, FY19. So that brings your net expense down to that, just about 671. Our FY18 quarter two actual charter enrollment is 47. The total tuition of 676084. Um, and a cherry sheet reimbursement estimate um, because I don't have my actuals on the school side, I don't see the actual reimbursement, so I'm still using an estimate of that roughly 101. So your net charter ex tuition expense for FY18 is roughly 575, 526. 
of the FY18 charter enrollments, there are four seniors, and those those four students represent an expense of sixty-four thousand dollars. So if those students graduated and no additional students enrolled in charters, the FY19 net cost estimate would be five twelve, and that's that six almost six twelve minus the cherry sheet estimate for uh, charter reimbursement aid. But those are also more unknowns, especially around charter on, on the town side, but I know you're looking at the entire picture that expense comes out of the town side, and the best planning they have is a cherry sheet, they're given, but, uh, and I quote, I even called the department and said, I'm confused why that number uh, spiked up, what is it tied to, where are the actual, because every other number that I do is tied to a spreadsheet with an actual student, an actual revenue, and an actual expense. Uh, when I called the department, they said, it's not tied to anything. I said, okay. And um, that was, <laughs> it was, it's just an estimate. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the expenses have been increasing over time, so I understand why they, they estimate at an increase. That, that makes more sense. It's better to um, under-promise and over-deliver, I imagine, is, mm -hmm. is their message. And I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to say about any of the no, things on the back page. Please. No? Get on just about everything. Anything to add? Quite a bit. And as yeah. we get more information, <laughs> as those things change, we'll I'll update the school committee. We'll, we'll update the town. You know, we're eager to have as accurate as information as possible to make the best decisions that you can. So as we have information, we'll be certain to update you with it. Great. Well, thank you. Thank, thank, you, thank you very, very much. much. We appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for explaining with us. Of course. <laughs> Love that stuff. Thanks for being in front of me. Oh, thank you. Thanks. I appreciate it. Thank you. My son's one of them, so I have a vested interest. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who would like to come next? Rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. Well, you want to go together or? It's up to you. You could be both welcome. Safety and numbers, right? Absolutely. That's right. Public safety, go with any numbers. Go with any numbers. You can serve wherever you want. <laughs> then sit in a way that the other can see you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you guys just have um, the line by line yes. item? You don't have this? No. Me. No. There's one for communication, one for police. There's one for each of them. It is a great thing that you do have an officer <laughs> dedicated. I see them all the time yeah. over there at the games, the kids, you know, they they we're, went in the car because yeah. they had lunch with them one yeah. time. Yeah, it's great. We're getting a lot of uh, great feedback on that. Uh, and that's, you know, that's kind of one of, the, one of the things that I'm building into future budgets is mm -hmm. that we want to build on that. Um, we want to make sure that he's available more. Because right now he's, he's spread between four schools. Mm -hmm. Um, and he still has his patrol duties to take care of. We don't have enough officers to just be able to give him free reign to just go be at the schools. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of part of what we've been working on together to try to make sure that both police and fire are more accessible um, in the schools. You know, the last thing we want is, the only time we show up is when something bad happens. That's, that's not what we're going for. But I'm glad to hear that. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad to hear happy with Will there be like more grants and things coming up because of what happened that we could look at to, you know? We I can only hope, um, but you know, I can echo what Annie said in that every every grant that we've participated in in the past, with the exception of our state 911 grant, mm. has dried up. Yeah. That's the only one that has been continuous and. Um, that really only covers a small fraction of some of the things that we do. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's very, um, it's very, really geared towards training and equipment for communications, dispatch, things like that. Anything that has to do with, with 911. 
Um, other than that, um, the, she was actually she actually referenced that um, that safety grant that, for the schools. Mm -hmm. That was sent to us as well because there's a component in there that has to do with school resource officers. The problem is, is after you know we discussed it, it it's it's a re it's more of a research grant. There's really no actionable material in there for us to to build on, uh, and it's so in depth. We would almost have to hire another person mm -hmm. just to do just to just to commit to the follow through that they're looking for. Okay. Um, but as you know, as far as personnel and things like that, I was thinking more of like uh, even equipment because yeah. you know I saw one I one thing I saw they um, I think today show had it and it was like the um, the smoke that comes down and mm -hmm. all they had yeah, they had the safety that. number one safety yeah. school out yeah, there. Yeah, the right? one with the um, it had like a safe room built into the corner and stuff yes. yeah yeah i saw that too and uh so the smoke came down and all the rooms were um you know the doors were more like bulletproof yep. and then they automatically lock yeah and, um, and then they were connected right connected to the police department so you yeah. could see right That's, we're actually working on some of the yeah. stuff oh you so are on, on the fire department side we have the safe Thanks. safe program so bringing in the 911 training and all that stuff that fits very well with um, what the schools try to teach as it is so we don't take away from their teaching hours so it's all through the state uh, Department of Fire Services so that's the, the kids safe so going in and training them all that stuff but so that funding is out there so now that the deputy that I just came on board uh, I used to get that grant annually but I there wasn't enough for me to go sure. around to do it all so sure. we're bringing that back on board that usually is around 4800 five grand it usually stays pretty consistent the other part of that is the senior safe program, which was actually brought on board by myself at the state level. So now the state has brought that on board. So I have the resident was the first recipient of that safe senior safe grant. So that's educating seniors on how to be fire safe. So we're reducing costs of going out on false alarms and mm -hmm. all this other stuff. So that that is part of it. The fifty thousand dollar grant that Mike and I got is part of that. Um, uh, Commonwealth Security Grant, where we did the active shooter training at the mall. Yeah, yeah. That brought in a bunch of equipment for us for, you know, for uh, tactical vests, for, you know, making entries with police, for, for rescuing, you know, God forbid if we ever had to do that, but tourniquets, all that kind of stuff. So hardening our, our ability to respond to incidents like that. Yeah. So, you know, we, we now have a pretty okay. decent plan that we're building off of. Well, I figured too. I mean, if we could say, we're, you know, I'm sure that school is the safest school there. <laughs> people come in and want to go there. I mean, yeah. if we showed how safe and how how if people would want to come to our schools because it, yeah. it is a safe place and it's a scary thing out there now. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, the only. I mean, you know, really the issue is is what is the what does the town want to do? What do the people want to do? Do they want? You know, there's a lot of different thought processes out there. Um, you know, as far as what's wrong and how do we solve it. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. I've heard a lot of proponents and a lot of opponents to hardening the schools and making them feel like prisons and looking like prisons and things like that. Oh, so, sure. um, I, I'm all I'm all for anything. Um, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna stay in my lane though, as far as doing what we can do to to, to make sure people feel safe. Same the same with Mike. So Annie also mentioned the she showed you those flyers that they're handing out for we're actually working on a program that's being done in Ware right now. So it's uh, the Ware deputy chief. Uh, he's modeling it after another community uh, because they had a lot of students that were choicing out. So it's a it's basically a basic firefighter program uh, that they're bringing into the schools. It's their pilot program this year. So we're going to be working with the schools on that as well to try and get myself or the deputy in there to start doing that that training which will offer up another you know something exciting that'll be a little bit different and, uh, from from the where from what's gone on and where it's it's going to the state level now they're they've been invited to the you know to the governor's office to talk about this program you know there's there's engineering components there's emergency medical services all that all that is wrapped into that class so we're trying to build out and be able to um, you know obviously the junior firefighter program is is pretty exciting that we have yeah. that on board now but we're trying to we're having a, obviously we're having a hard time getting volunteers to sign up so if they maybe get an idea at that high school level of what it actually means 
they might be more interested in coming on board with that, but then also maybe going into that career. So we would, you know, maybe you'll have more to, to pick from. It's right. It's been very difficult now. They're, they're having an extremely hard time finding paramedics and, and firefighters. They're they're slim and far in between. So, you know, we're trying to we're trying to build that that program up. Too. So I think that'll be another positive. Absolutely, I think so. Yeah, and I think we definitely have to get it out there and make sure, you know, a lot of press releases and marketing mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. So like press releases. We've been doing well with those lately. <laughs> um, so I don't know if uh, I I get the sense that we, you know you probably don't want to go through three, three budgets line by line. If you do, fine. Um, these 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 um, forms here. Um, you know I know David. I think he's posted these, um, so they are certainly out there for the public to read. Um, this is just this is my explanation of what I would say at this table line by line to help you know what we're doing with these budgets okay. um, so it's something that you can take and you know just okay. take your time with mm -hmm. one is for communications one is for police but as far as bottom lines go um, Mike and I were tasked with um, you know making sure that we, we sat down and did everything we possibly could to consolidate um, and to move money to places where it best suits each budget and be able to fund the firefighter positions. So both of us, you know, went back to our lines, whether it be expenses and or wages, and basically did the best we could to take money and move it over to wage lines for him, so that we can, um, so that we can bring the what the, the select board has said is their priority, which is public safety. Mm -hmm. You know, bring it to life, so to speak, as best we can in our in our department. So you'll see. Um, a little over uh, almost $22,000 reduction in the police budget and almost a $2,000 reduction in the uh, communications budget. Um, the reason that the communications budget isn't as much is mainly because most of the communications budget has um, building line items built into it, electricity costs and all that. So we can only work within the parameters that we have for, for next year. Um, there's a potential that uh, our electric costs are going to go up 33%, so we had to factor in for that. Um, but that's really both of my budgets, the police and the communications. Um, that's what you'll see as far as the bottom line goes. If you really drill down and read my explanation forms, you'll see that even with those reductions, um, we are still... Um, we're still able to do, we're still able to stay on pace with what the plan was almost three or four years ago when I took over. And I remember sitting in front of you then asking for three police officers so that we could solve the overtime problem. Um, that, you know, I'm certainly not ready to say that it's done, but it's, it's certainly better. Um, but we, you know, we had a plan that wasn't just a three-year plan. So even with those reductions and consolidating as much as we possibly can with the fire department, um, if you really read my explanations, you'll see that we're still we're still moving forward. We're not stagnant, which is kind of which was kind of my worry when we really got into how much we were going to have to reduce um, to to make sure that we got firefighters. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm I'm still excited. I'm still I'm I'm, I'm still uh, uh, pleased that we're able to, to to continue to take steps forward rather than standing still because we we really did there was a lot of balls in the air for this budget s specifically mm -hmm. the last budget was the three police officers we knew that it was a very simple step forward simple solution the problem is is that we had other things that were right behind it and we had to do we had to work out a budget specifically for the departments we had to work with the fire department to make sure that we get the fire protection services that we need for, for Hadley. We had to work with the town administrator and the select board to impact bargain with the union to make some changes to the contract for FY19 budget. So there was a lot of things that all had to fall into place. And the fact that they all did fall into place and we were still able to make the reductions we did is pleasing to me. Uh, I hope it's... I hope it's pleasing to you as well, but you know, like I said, you'll have to 
really take a look and see if you agree mm -hmm. with uh, what we're going to try. Okay. Yeah, we, we heard that you were both working very well together. Um, we were using you as uh, we would see what you would do together, so that's why we started thinking other departments could work as, as more of a group because we saw you, you did savings um, from telephones to, mm -hmm. you know, so yeah, I, it, it's, it's, uh, it's very impressive. Thank you. Thank you. So on the fire department side, uh, I, David had asked me to um, kind of show you the, the breakdown of the, the staffing that's coming in. So you can just see the breakdown of how they'll be paid. Um, as you can see, there's really not much of any overtime in the budget because we're going to be following the uh, federal labor laws for um, firefighters, which allows for up to 53 hours of straight time. Uh, so modeling, modeling after the communities around us that don't have unions, unionized call for uh, full-time fire departments at our size. Um, this is what we came up with for their for their staffing model. So. Again, I'm starting from scratch here. This has never this has never happened in Hadley, so I'm I'm going by best practice and getting as much information as I can from every chief around me. So uh, we're going to be we have the command staff in place now. So the deputy chief started two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and was going to be coming in tomorrow night, but that's not going to happen because of the snow. But mm -hmm. uh, right off the bat, he's hit the ground running, and uh, so we now have the command structure set up. Uh, Nick McKenna, the lieutenant who is doing fire prevention, is going to be moving into one of the roles as um, uh, he's, he's coming out of fire prevention. The deputy will take that position. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, one second, sir. Sure. Okay. Um, so he's going to be following, uh, he'll be getting a new job description, and basically the way the shifts will be broken down, there'll be two groups. So it's going to be a four on, four off schedule, 12 hours per shift. Uh, so four on, four off rotating. And it'll be one of the lieutenants, one firefighter, and either the deputy or myself uh, to round that off. Um, I actually called Molly the other day because for the first time in the history of Hadley, we actually went to a reported fire with myself driving out the door and a full engine company driving out the door and showing up on scene with the actual NFPA standard of two in and two out. So <laughs> I can tell you that it's, it, was, it was a huge breath of fresh air to have that happening. Um, so that's, that's the way we're going to run it. Uh, because we don't have an ambulance right now, we're not looking at a mandatory callback. So myself or the deputy would fill in if we have somebody calling sick or vacation time. So we would go back to that, um, that minimum of three uh, or, or two if we had to. Um, we're also looking to have buy-in from the call force side of it. So if we don't get, you know, if we don't have a firefighter that can come back, a full-time firefighter, or myself, if I'm out of training or the deputy's not available, then we'll offer it up to the call force. It, and the standard is that they, they would get that firefighter's pay rate for the day. Um, so the budget, you can see, I, I, there's really not much to pull from. Uh, so in order to streamline again, you'll see that the the office manager position had to find a way to try and cut down on this this increase. So my total increase is about eleven thousand dollars, but some of that is based upon increases in you know equipment costs. We've we've streamlined some of the stuff. So all the fire extinguishers for the whole town have come under the fire department. So that eight hundred dollar increase or six hundred dollar increase is because now it's all under this this department. Our radios went off of um, warranty, so there's a bit of an increase there, but. Um, because we have full-time folks coming in, we, I figured it would be better to try and streamline the office manager position at this point. So we'll assign some of that stuff to the firefighters, the deputy, and then uh, we have a little bit of funding for administration on um, the police chief's office person to fund a little bit that way to, to fill in a little bit on that. So we'll see how it works. Um, I can't say at this point if it's going to be a burden or not because uh, we don't have that data, but we'll take a look and see how it, how, how it works. And if it's a real issue, then you know perhaps we'll be coming back next year to, to revisit it. But we felt that that's the best way to, to mm -hmm. cover that right now. So hopefully that, that all makes sense um, with that staffing model. And so you have you, you 
do you know who you're going to hire for the one and two fire? That process is starting right now. So the job description is done. It'll be posted hopefully within the next couple of weeks. We want to have the command staff in place first and uh, make sure we're ready to go on that side. And the schedule has been built out. So we know how that'll work on the, with the four on four off. And I think we'll probably have a good number of folks because it's an EMT basic firefighter position. I think we'll probably have a good selection. Um, so we're looking forward to that and we're gonna bring in some of the call force guys to be a part of that selection and hopefully usually team up with the police to come in as well. So all your firefighters will be if, yeah, um, EMTs? Correct. Correct. Or any or in a program. Paramedics? No, no, we, we're not. We would not be looking at a paramedic level of service at this point. So it's not. Right. It would I just didn't know if it was someone had it. <laughs> uh, I mean, if they had it and they yeah. wanted to practice as an EMT, yeah. uh, they would have to understand that they would be getting paid sure. a rate that's you know it's mm -hmm. a basic level EMT rate. Yeah. Well, I'm really happy at how we've been able to do what we set out to do three years ago. That we've been able to actually make some. In on that. Mm -hmm. And I just I feel really grateful to you guys for your leadership and being able to do that. You, said, you know, I, it seems to me it has not been easy, you know, with the constrictions that we had on our budget. Mm -hmm. And um, I, it sounds like you've been really creative and, and thought outside the box about how to do it. Yeah, yeah, it's a good word, David. David likes to use that word with us a lot. Get creative. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, we appreciate it as well. Um, we wouldn't. We wouldn't be anywhere close to where we're at without, you know, this finance committee and the select board and, and David supporting us. It's it's a team effort. The fee schedule side too, I haven't completed, but there is going to be some increase in revenue as well. I did, forgot to mention that. So my my increase in will hopefully be offset by some increases in, in the rev, on the revenue side for inspectors. So yeah, the other, the we other were. Portion. That was going to be the last question. I was wanted to know where you were going to go with revenues, and mm -hmm. I figured. Um, now that you had the staff, now you would have more time to, or dedicate someone to be out there. Like how often on the businesses do you have to do, do you have to go to each business once a year and, and test maybe fire extinguishers or stuff like that? I mean, ultimately, uh, there are mandated inspections that we are hitting. So your liquor licenses, your, um, uh, some of your, the Sunbridge of Hadley, that kind of stuff. There's mandated inspections for those. Uh, we do annual inspections all the time with Tim. Uh, however, unfortunately, calls come in all the time, which interrupt that ability to go out and, and get every business. There's over 450 businesses, businesses in town right now. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, yes, would we like to get into all those spaces? And will these firefighters be assigned that with a lieutenant? Absolutely, they will be. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not quite sure what that what we can accommodate with the training they still have to do maintenance mm -hmm. and and everything else on top of that. So it all but will increase some this year, probably more than next year. Yes. And it'll be increasing uh, every yes. year. So looking exactly. outside the box, we're stealing ideas from other communities okay. and bringing in revenue. So where, for example, again has a very strong dumpster permitting program. So under Mass General Law, the fire department is supposed to issue combustible waste permits. They bring in over $10,000 a year alone just in dumpster permits. You see all the dumpsters we have in town, it's just that we have to employ how we're gonna, we're, we're changing our method of a contractor coming and pulling a permit. We're gonna actually go out and survey all the different dumpster companies and require them to pay us. So the dumpster they're trucking in, they will have to have that fee set up with us ahead of time. Great. So, so that's the kind of stuff we're trying to find this increase in revenue. And, um, Tim and I, again, Tim couldn't make it tonight. Mm -hmm. He has a little emergency. Um, but him and I have been sitting down, for example, uh, wood stove inspections. We haven't been billing out. We go out jointly with the building inspector because his, his wood stove inspection requires us to do a smoke inspection. That fee was never in place, so we've now incorporated an additional fee for our time going out with him. Oh, so, okay, so we'll start, you know, we've seen increases in home sales across the board. You'll see it in the annual report. but. Our, our fees definitely went up. We, we definitely increased our fee intake this past year. And I would hope it's, you know, it's it's tough when it's a $50 permit fee. It takes a while for it to add up. Um, when we have these bigger uh, businesses and renovations where we're going by a square footage fee, like the new hotel that's coming in is a pretty substantial, substantial fee. So it's like up and down. Mm -hmm. um, 
depending on what you have coming in for new, new construction. Mm -hmm. So we've really, we're working hard on that fee schedule to see what we can boost up. Mm -hmm. okay. and a question on the revenues on, on your, mm -hmm. um, I, I know at one time that we talked about uh, there was gonna be an increase in fees and I think it had to do with the drinking and mm -hmm. not putting, just feeing them instead of. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, um, are you talking about um, any open containers or you, yeah, uh, yeah. like the bylaw adjustments? Right. Um, yeah, the last adjustment that we made was at the last town meeting, I believe, and it was, um, I think it had to do with uh, noise, didn't it? It was matching up with what Amherst was doing. Right. I think we raised it from 100 to 300 or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and we're also, you know, with, with the increased uh, personnel that we have, we're also seeing a pretty good increase in Chapter 90. Um, just this past week, uh, my administrative assistant just called upstairs to me this morning and told me that citation mail out, she does weekly citation mail out, and uh, it was a, a little over $3,000 for one week in citations. Mm -hmm. So with the increased officers that we have out there and what we're hoping to do is build out a traffic officer or a traffic program, um, hopefully we'll be able to do even better on that. Most of the other um, revenues that we can bring in are set by the state, firearms permitting and things like that, and things that we just can't adjust. Mm -hmm. um, but workload, you know, officers going out there and actually writing citations that those are the kinds of things that we can affect um, in different ways changing bylaws and things like that like Molly was saying we uh, we did adjust them it's just a matter of actually citing the folks um, you know, we can't cite people unless we get the call so sure. <laughs> um, yeah we don't have uh, we don't have as much of a you know, it's much of a way to bring in the revenue like the fire department does with inspections, but mm -hmm. we do have ways. And uh, I know you have, I, and I'm not quite sure what you, what, where the funds go. You have the fire department has friends of the fire department, right? Our Firemen's Association. Yes. yes. So is that for just do you raise money for that is it just for like scholarships what do you what is what do you do with that money or what is it for okay. so <laughs> I guess they, they won't just just to make sure that there's no misunderstanding oh. the fire the fires association is a separate organization from the town okay so they're uh, they're operating outside of the town budget yeah same with the park police association yeah. both 501 3 c but it's, it's an interesting question, but I just didn't want people, uh, particularly in TV land, to mm -hmm. think that we're talking about the town budget here. Okay, yeah. I, well, I figure it might be separate, but I think it you, it may incorporate, maybe you do, um, you know, uh, equipment or something or purchase something. I don't know. So we <laughs> haven't officially announced it yet, and oh. they probably won't kill me for it, but um, our association has, in the past, we've always teamed up with the, commu the community on trying to bring in equipment. So the boat, for example, was all fundraised by the association. Uh, air packs, Jaws of Life, we've done fundraisers. The association wanted to change it because we weren't building up anything in our, in our revenue. So what we decided to do was to partner with the town. So that if we were going to invest in an air pack, the town should match that. That's what we decided we should do. Uh, the association was originally set up to so support the families of firefighters to build morale. Uh, it was actually set up to actually purchase land if needed. Um, so the whole, the original, the original build out of that association had a lot of stuff. We've, we actually have, we've really been working our tails off raising funding and it's not official yet, but we have been waiting. It's been in capital for a new brush truck. Um, and it, it's, it's tough, you know, every year there's a lot of stuff on capital. So we came across a vehicle that was being decommissioned. It was put into salvage by the town of Concord. It was involved in a fire in one of their stations and uh, there was really no damage to it, but the community decided that they weren't gonna, or the fire department said they didn't want it back. It went into a salvage title and our association decided to purchase it. 
And what we're working on right now is building out that truck, and that's going to take the place of multiple multiple vehicles that we have. And uh, the only portion that will be a cost to us, we invested 25000 of it, and the remainder of it, which is just over 1000 would be we would be paying out of my budget. Mm -hmm. So that hasn't been officially put in place, but we have a truck now that has 4,000 miles on it that's going to be replacing a 1952 brush truck that we've been trying to. So the association understands that, and they, they want to be a partner with the, with the town. It's just we don't want to dump our entire savings into a piece of equipment without them realizing that we're working our tails off to try and do that, and would hope that there would be some support. So, and right, that's, that's all the guys. They call the guys and girls from the association work their butts off to, to bring that revenue in. So that's, they'll, we'll be presenting it to, it's, it's still under the ownership of the association, but at some point it'll be gifted to the town. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just think it's a, a good thing you're showing that you're raising extra money elsewhere. I think it should be, um, you know, you, I don't know, but I, I think we should um, uh, maybe put more money towards something like that. You know, incentives for people to do that type of thing. I think it should be, there should be an incentive for that. I love imagining. I, you know, I just, uh, to show all that work that you've done. I think that's great. Now, here's the other thing is you, you, you get a lot of equipment. Where do you put it up? That's good. Problem well, that's that's what we've, <laughs> we've we've always begged, borrowed, and see it stolen from. You know, so we get free equipment from the state, yeah. the Department of Defense, the uh, excess property under the Department of Forest Service. Um, they provide us equipment. Yeah, so I mean, we're some of that stuff is it's old, it's tired. So that's the stuff we're pushing out. So mm -hmm. we we received a free vehicle from Ware. Ware was done with it. It's a great vehicle. It's getting moved up into the North Station. So there'll be an engine in this truck that has a newer set of jaws of life on it. So we're actually gonna have redundant, so call force firefighters will be able to go out and have the equipment that they need. That piece of stuff that's up there right now is gonna be, you know, it's gonna be going out for sale or it has to go back to, you know, the DOD program. So again, we're getting rid of some of this stuff that we've, we've been working a long time to try and, you know, and get rid of it. Just, it's been taking time. The mm -hmm. tanker truck that you saw that we dedicated to Stanley is, that was another free vehicle that we got some small funding from the town to build out. We made a capital request for, I think it was $16,000 or something like that. And we now have a 2010 tanker truck that's now been built out and I, I won't be seeing that replaced in my, in my career. So again, we're, we're, we're getting as creative with, as we can. We're, you know, we work with Mike too. Mike has cruisers that come out. If he has one that's available that we can use for, you know, an officer or something like that, you know, we've been talking about that as well. So we, we make this stuff last as long as we can. Mm -hmm. With yeah, a We've done the same thing, you know, getting buying used to write that chapter ninety. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, getting used vehicles through capital and things like that at, at low cost just to bridge gaps to get us through, um, you know, rather than having to buy a brand new car because you know, the cost of these things nowadays just keeps skyrocketing. So, um, yeah, we're trying to be as creative as, creative as we can. And is your association similar to what Mike is saying? Mm -hmm. is in, in, the, in the sense that it exists, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, our association was stagnant for quite some time. It still existed, but um, we really, you know, we didn't have the interest from the officers. It wasn't like the fire department. Um, we had much less, you know, lower numbers of officers than, than fire department members. We are just starting to kind of build it back up again. Um, but when we do, you know, the money that we do have in there, it's very similar. We roll it back into the community in some way. Donations to, you know, Little League Baseball and um, child abuse. Calvert Kid. Calvert Kid, yeah. Um, you know, uh, the VA's office does a uh, child abuse breakfast. Uh, once a year, we always send a few people to that and donate to causes like that, just to you know, roll it back into the community. It's not for the officers; it's it's to do things you know back with the community. Um, we certainly don't have the um, the legacy that they have built over the years in the fire department side, but we're we're working on. It. Mm -hmm. I like uh, the other thing is um, I, who, and I'm not sure who does it for you. Your Facebook. You both mm -hmm. have Facebook, so I think that is. Um, 
That's something we're working on. There, his, 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 his is amazing. Yeah. We just, yeah. we're, that's one of the assignments of the new uh, deputy is to try and get a little bit more information out on that side and actually work with that gentleman over there who's been asking for a long time okay. uh, to get some, some more outreach. And, you know, we've, we've been teaming up a lot. So the public, the public safety concept is... We're doing our full, uh, we're, our, our, we have a full professional website that's under construction right now. We'll have even more information on it than uh, in, in Facebook. But these are things that are under construction, mm -hmm. step at a time kind sure. of things. So, but yeah. Great. Yeah, Between talking Thank to you. the folks in the school and from you guys, I just feel like we live in a wonderful time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for Thank working you. so hard at yeah. this budget. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, may I uh, take one more of these yeah. to give to Terry? Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, one communication yeah, and great. one police. Yeah. Okay. Probably shouldn't leave out, you know, the school department as well because we've actually been working hard with them to, uh, you know, be creative with the funding mm -hmm. for FY19 with the school department as well. It's been tremendous. They're incredible people to work with. Great, great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> All right, David, do you want to go over anything else today? I mean, we, we did the um, warrant. I mean, we talked a little bit about it yesterday. I mean, or is there anything you want to point out to us? Or anything else? Well, uh, at this time, I think that um, the only thing I have is those two cups of paper down there. Oh, okay. All right, so Tim does have an emergency. Okay. He can't well, be here tonight. Sure. I know he has an idea about uh, how to better serve the town in terms of zoning enforcement. So I'll try to schedule him for another night. Okay. When things are working out for him. Um, this goes back to the human resource coordinator and the finance director. You asked me to find salaries and mm -hmm. job descriptions and so I said I'd ask my colleagues mm -hmm. so I put out a request for for t populate towns of populations of 12,000 or fewer do you have an HR director mm -hmm. may I have the job description and how much do you pay that person same with the finance director I've sent you this electronically but here are hard copies of the, of the job descriptions I don't know if you've had a chance to review them at all both from the town of Hartford? Oh. Yeah. Once, yeah. Once HR, once in, in uh, the front, fine, both from the, yes, I did. Finance director. So they're both just from this one town. That no, was, no, you no, only no, got the one response. They're simple. They're samples from many different towns there. Oh. And about five or six or seven from towns comparable to having. <coughs> okay. And again, this is sent out electronically. So you've sent these to us, yes? Yes, yes. Okay. I did see them. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I don't have anything else so to add. So maybe a question for the select board, if you don't mind. No. Um, so then looking at the numbers, I think that we'll have an easier time putting together in terms of what we'd be asking for for an override. But in terms of the actual job descriptions and maybe an outline of responsibilities, is that something the select board might want to collaborate on in terms of what we might be taking to the town meeting? Um, <laughs> so, what, who might be taking the So, meeting? yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's going to be another question for yeah. tomorrow at the tri board yeah. meeting. Yeah. Um, Which uh, not tomorrow. Got the words that we're not yeah. 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 So, Grand, okay. Grand Feller, Coven Drifton. Exactly. Is that any date for rescheduling that yet? Well, we're trying to work with the uh, with the uh, 
with the American Legion, and it turns out Wednesdays are not particularly good nights for them. They can't do it on the 21st. Oh, I hadn't heard that. Yeah. Okay. So because I left the message saying. So we're trying to come up with the 28th or maybe some other well, other day. Well, the 28th would be a Wednesday. Right, right, right. So. So, okay. So I'll work with them and uh, we'll come up with a time. All right. I mean, if we need to. I mean, on a Tuesday or Monday or Friday night, I'm sure and we I've, do it. And I'm only speaking for myself. I mean, that whole the rest of the select board, if we need to come in for just a one-off individual discussion, yeah. short meeting, mm -hmm. there's a, you know, I'm game for that. Yeah. We, I mean, yeah. the longer we push that off, the I understand. more difficult. Yeah. Yeah, it's very unfortunate that we have to def delay this conversation because it's much needed, but... Given given the weather, uh, yeah. it just seems like we're we're taking too many chances with public safety. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, then we'll bring this up at that meeting, that schedule. But the primary what we discussed before in our previous meeting was um, the finance committee is happy to advocate for the override as a whole, make the presentation, and kind of do a lot of that work. Um, we'd like to formally ask the select board to put it on the warrant. So there's that that we need. And then we're still trying to gauge how the select board feels on any level, whether it's this uh, like framing the job description, just kind of like working together on the proposal, mm -hmm. or so far as actually recommending it and working with us to propose it. Right. Um, so that would be the topic for discussion. But, but yeah, so that was my main point is that I think with these numbers, we'll be able to get the numbers together. Yeah. But I don't know if it should be the finance committee's role to actually come up with the job description and scope of responsibilities for these positions. So. Um, no, I mean, yeah. right, I mean, because that's, that's management, right. you know, I mean, in an advisory capacity, absolutely. Um, but I mean, certainly it would fall under the purview of the select board, and, you know, and I think um, there are different ways to approach this, um, and there are going to be different thoughts about it. Um, the need is there. I don't. I don't think anyone at this point on the select board would disagree with the need in terms of having a focused uh, financial, you know, a area of expertise. Whether you call it a finance director or not, but clearly that kind of singular focused position that is doing cost benefit analysis, management reporting, all of all of that that we do our best to get done amongst all of the other things and it's being done by a group of people. You know, David certainly at the helm, but having to draw in resources from the treasurer's office, the tax collector, and assessor, and all of that, accountant. Um, the HR clearly stands on its own. I think that's more um, of an obvious position. And um, information technology, the same thing. I mean, I think we've all got our heads wrapped around that need department had certainly brought that up loud and clear going back to the SWOT analyses that were done a couple of years ago. You know, so I think, mm -hmm. I think there's been sufficient time and energy put into that to get everybody to buy in. Then when you get to the, okay, how do we get it done? That's when it gets a little bit more difficult. So let's put the funding aside for a second. Um, earlier tonight, I think you heard the fire chief, and I was actually thinking about this when, when these words came out of his mouth, he was talking about now that I have my command structure in place, we're moving forward with the additional hires. And I've been doing a lot of thinking about this issue. Um, and one of the other topics that we, we don't, I believe, have unanimity around is whether or not we have the proper governance structure in place for the town. Okay, I know that, that you all had that conversation um, and recognize this distributed decision making, how hard it is to get something done, part time, ever revolving select board members. By the time you figure out how things work, you're rolling off or you're up for re election again. Um, difficulty getting people to volunteer in these positions, all of that. Um, then you have couple that with the authority of the town administrator is currently written, which is very limited. Um, and the variety of people in town hall who are elected that don't really report up through a command structure, which is what Mike Spanknable was talking about earlier. 
So one school of thought is which, which way do you go? Do you put your time and energy into the command structure and try to get buy-in there first? And if in fact, and again, I personally have only been talking about the more than subtle change, but change from a town administrator to more of a town manager role, where that individual, that position would have more hiring authority and, and firing the opposite, you know, the other side of it too, then does it make sense to put the leadership in place and then let that individual move forward with the hires? Again, I go back to kind of private industry, if you will, that would be a more common practice. As we all know, <laughs> trying to relate what happens in, in the uh, private sector into the, the public sector doesn't necessarily map well. Um, but I do think that that's something to think about. Mm -hmm. That certainly is not going to happen before a town meeting, and we certainly haven't even had a real discussion about any possibility of, of a governance change. Um, again, I think you, you heard when it has come up and when it did come up at some of our tri-board meetings, um, that wasn't something that the full select board was ready to really dive in and explore. I think everybody said, go ahead, if you want to dig into it and get more information about it, they were fine with that, that kind of fact gathering, but we haven't brought that discussion back to the table. So I'm just saying, this is my thought process. Um, yeah, no, I was giving that some thought to and mm -hmm. kind of ended up coming at it from the other way, that if we had the support of finance, HR, and IT to free up board time, essentially finance working with us, you know, HR working with me, with you, then we could have the time for the discussion about form of government, right? Well, so, so hold that thought for a second, because by, by bringing on HR and IT, you'll free up board time to a point. Certainly when the board gets involved on the HR side, oftentimes, unfortunately, it's because we're having to go into an executive session because there are human resource issues as opposed to putting the quality control on the front end, which is the reason we're saying we need HR, which is to make sure that people are, are well fed and taken care of so that these things don't blow up into big personnel issues that require board involvement. Um, you bringing on more staff is going to also exacerbate the stretch of the town administrator. So on the one hand, Part of the reason that we're talking about this at all is because we recognize that David, as the town administrator, is spread so thin that he can't give any of these particular areas adequate time and expertise. Is that fair? I want to say it. Yeah. After, after, Definitely. After today, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I mean, there, there may be pockets of it where you can kind of dig in, but I mean, it, it's amazing the human resource issues that are flowing through your office literally on a daily basis, taking up David's time. IT, not so much, but that's more of, you know, quite frankly, benign neglect, you know, that <laughs> deferral of, well, we just haven't gotten to it yet, so therefore it's not taking up time, but that's not a good good plan either. So, you know, again, I'm coming back to the which, which direction do we do we go in? And, and part of my concern now, you know, I'm a firm advocate for bringing on this expertise. I think the town desperately needs it. But the last thing we want to do is bring it on when we're not in a position to adequately receive it and implement it well. Which goes back to the fact that it's March 6th. 6th. And I'm, I personally am very fearful that um, bringing an, an actual override conversation to a May town meeting, I don't think we're giving it adequate hearing and vetting time. I think we owe more think time and thought and probably a really good public hearing on all of this um, before we would go to the taxpayers with it, especially coming off of um, some significant building project, project. So I, I am still firmly in the camp of this is where we need to go. I'm not in the camp at this point of going in there in May. So, so I'm just letting you know where I, where I am. Yeah. I can't speak for obviously Joyce, Jerry, or, or John. Or we're <laughs> after the election, we know we're going to have um, three, no, two, 
the, yeah, the, the potential for three new board members. Obviously, Joyce is up for re-election, but the potential, there's three seats that are going to be filled. So, throw that in the mix now. So, we could be even, I mean, this is a big deal to be talking to the town about an override, so we could even be going all in whole hog, and then come April, whatever, 11th or 12th, or whatever the election date is, and turn around and have your, your select boards flip. So I just don't, I just don't think this is a really good time. The, the issue is real, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm not in any way suggesting that we walk away from the issue. I think we continue to work on it, um, and then figure out what's the best approach to it. It doesn't mean to say it couldn't be the fault. Right, but it just made to me. Just I just don't see it happening. And as far as the, uh, you know, with the town government goes, mm -hmm. now I, I know Amherst did some things. You know, changed around their. No, their, they're they're doing they're doing they're doing, doing, they're doing, 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 doing something. <laughs> they're voting. Okay, but yeah. didn't they had a they they initiated they had a whole big committee that they spent a lot of time on it, um, correct? Mm -hmm. So. <clears throat> The finance committee was has been talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, what do you what do you think? Do you, is it something that you think that we should just? I mean, we listen to people, just do it ourselves, or is it something? I was thinking that we almost would start up something like Amherst did, is a big, you know, a, a, um, form a, a separate committee or some a group of people to do a lot of uh, work on it. And then bring and, yeah. and, and I'm thinking if it is a separate, does it have to go? Does the um, if it is something separate, would the select board have to initiate? You know, would we go to the select board and the select board start that? I think that would achieve the best. And I mean, any any time that there's again not unanimity as to outcome, but unanimity in terms of let's let's explore is going to get a better end result. <laughs> so yeah. I think ideally that would be the way to go, would be to have the, you know, the recommendation come back and say after the work that you've done, again, uh, um, articulating all of the reasons why. I mean, it's not change for change's sake, right? right. I mean, right. these are legitimate issues. Right. Um, and until people buy into the fact that those, those issues are real, they're not going to see necessarily the need to change. I'm, and again, I, I'm way, way beyond that at this point. I, mean, I think these issues are very, very real. Um, and I think we owe it to the employees, the municipal employees more than anything, um, to take a serious look at this. Mm -hmm. I don't think it rises to the level of what Amherst is trying to accomplish. Um, I'm not picking on our neighbors, but <coughs> everything in Amherst seems to be bigger than a bread box. Um, <laughs> I think I think the change that we're talking about in here, and unless you unless you actually you know I mean, if you want people to evaluate a mayor and a city council, well I think that deserves a really big <laughs> uh, amount of yeah. involvement. I don't think anybody's been talking about that. I think again we're just talking about kind of the um, a shift from the, the day to day responsibilities from the select board to a professional uh, manager. You know the, the introduction of a chief operating officer, CEO, whatever you want to call it. I think that's really what we were talking about well, right now. Well, I think now. That the manager, that is a big, the town administrator versus manager is a big part, but I was also thinking the whole, the whole uh, organizational structure mm -hmm. needs to be, look, be looked at. Like, let's look at the treasurer. The treasurer has an assistant, but the assistant does HR. So yeah, would that assistant chart, now yeah. be moved out of the treasurer into, you know, would we have it in HR? And maybe where would HR fit? In, mm -hmm. in, do we, is that... You know, when we're looking that way, we have a full-time HR person. Are we gonna? How many more hours do we think we're gonna need to mm -hmm. bring that HR department together? But we'll have an organ. Right now, we have a an assistant treasurer who does HR mm -hmm. type of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, if we if we looked at the whole organization chart, mm -hmm. and I do think a lot of things need to be we looked at um, appointed versus elected mm -hmm. thing. Items which we're looking at now. Um, the other thing is my understanding is um, like the the two fire chiefs. I, the, the firefighter, if I'm right, uh, fire chief is he can uh, um, appoint, he can hire and fire a strong chief because he's a yeah. strong chief. 
Well, our police chief cannot. He has to go through the select board, which, you know, mm -hmm. you would think you'd want them to be similar, yep. the same. Yeah, and th those right? are, all, you know, many of the talking points that, that are leading to this, what, you know, what's the best decision-making process for the town of Hadley? You yeah. know, how can we most efficiently make, not just make a decision, but make the right decision, right? Um, so I do think that this begs community involvement and community engagement. Okay. So, so I, I'm agreeing with that. I'm just saying I think okay. <laughs> Amherst has taken it to, to a whole other level that we don't necessarily need to take it to. Um, but the idea of having a, an exploratory committee that involves some people, uh, former select board members, you know, I mean, people that are kind of close to government or people who have expertise in, in organizational management or that kind of thing, you know, trying to get people like, Mm -hmm. like that to participate mm -hmm. on a committee mm -hmm. um, and then representation from whoever we need to I'd certainly be mm -hmm. in favor of that but again it, I, 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 that it begs the conversation with the full select board not not obviously just me sure sure so if the finance committee brings something like this to the select board correct um, then the select board does would say okay we we will you know the finance committee great now we need to um, form that committee, mm -hmm. correct? And, you know, maybe some people from the finance, someone mm -hmm. from the select board, someone mm -hmm. from whoever, you know. Now, at that point, the, the select board has to create it, correct? Yeah, the like, committee? just like we do, like, a, a, the municipal building committee right? or any of those. They have to create yeah. Okay. And then once once we create that sort of a group, they're subject to open meeting law, right? Right, so and then they would have to come in and get signed in and all, or, or sworn in. Yep, and we could solicit, you know, again, if, if in fact okay. there's a direction, then we would solicit. I mean, I, I actually have had a couple of people mm -hmm. in town approach me and mm -hmm. say that if you ever get to that point, they would be interested in participating. Great. So I know that there would be letters of interest set in, you know, and then we'd have to figure out what the process was. I mean, in the past, the select boards really kind of said, you know, the, these are the skill sets that we're looking for, or representation we're looking for on mm -hmm. the committee, and then gone through the letters of interest to see who might fit the bill. Um, so, so all of that would have to be worked out if, if um, people wanted to go that way. So if we wanted to do set up something like this, is it something that um, us as maybe during a tri-board meeting, we could bring that recommendation at that point to the select board? I think that would be That would be fine? Mm -hmm. Or you don't even have to wait for the tri board, just ask for an appointment with the select board. Yeah, sure, of course, you could always do that. Okay. But probably not the same night as the, that we're talking to the Legion. <laughs> <laughs> so, then can we have, I guess there's not room on the agenda for the night for the Legion, but at some point, meet with the select board to just definitively say one way or the other kind of where we sit on the override and what the plan is moving forward right just get heard your opinion but like get all the select board's thoughts on it and have Terry here and just be able to hash it out mm -hmm. yeah remember there's still a couple of open points I mean I, I, I listen to the schools and I and I have their numbers here in front of me that aren't necessarily what David put in the budget well, about sixty four thousand dollars lighter than the original request that they made than the original request, but the original request wasn't what you put in the line item for the budget roll-up, correct? Uh, well, I showed what their original request was, and then I made my recommendation. Yeah. Right, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, so th this number is different from David's recommendation. Yeah. Um, and then the ambulance, uh, you, you're aware of the fact that um, people are going to the table next week? Two weeks. Two weeks. In two weeks' time. Um, and I think, you know, hopefully that will move along fairly quickly, but that number is likely to move as well, you know, and that needs to, we need to be bearing that in mind um, in this process compared to what's in, what's in the books in front of us. One other thing is the revenues that we're talking about with each of the divisions when we meet, uh, none of those new revenues are included in the revenue estimates in the budget. So as, as we start getting closer and closer to town meeting, and we have some history over the tickets that the, that the fire, the police chief is writing and his officers are writing and the dumpster and, uh, inspection fees and permitting fees. We can start looking at 
how do we start closing that gap, even if partially, but from uh, new revenue, which is not not in your estimate right now. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you came, Molly. That was good, you know, input. Oh. Yeah. Sure. I tell you, you ask me for an opinion, you'll always get one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we wanted, we, we were, you know, we, we have those two program, um, the override we keep looking at in the form of government we keep looking at. And we're looking to see what's our next step, you know, how are we going to take the next step. Do we have anything else? No, nothing? We go home now, David? Or you, or you have anything else to tell us? Okay. As for troopers, you're doing the long haul right now. And so pace yourself, hydrate, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I, you know, I wasn't just being polite when I said, after, you know, listening to the. Um, the school board and you listen to the firefighter and the fire chief of the police chief. I just think we really have a fantastic group of people in this town mm -hmm. and I, I feel really good about living here. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, have, you have an excellent pe team of people working for you. Mm -hmm. It's easy to lose sight of that on any given day. <laughs> what you say, so it's easy to lose sight of that yeah. on any given day, yeah. but you're right overall, there's no question. Mm -hmm. And if you know, and what I noticed too is it was funny watching Heather. She was with the smile. She was very passionate. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, they were very. Um, yeah, the smiles and how excited they were about what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Showed. Yeah, you know, I, I I remember those early, mm -hmm. early meetings about um, getting the you know beefing up the staff and. Uh, you know, all the challenges in between then and now in terms of the, the budget constraints, and yet, you know, everybody's been able to, to help, help it grow. Mm -hmm. it's been fantastic. Mm -hmm. Just it all. Thank you. All right, so well, I think we see each other in a couple of weeks. Um, I yes, I would say so. The 13th you have off. There can't be off. All right, unless you don't. Oh, but we should check to see, just to double check, and then um, I think you've already posted it, correct, David? I've posted all your everything meetings. for us. I've posted everything through the 9th of April. All right, so the next. Um, next meeting is with is that Carlo, the 19th, I think? Is, is that what you're doing? I have night. Public Works, 19th. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And tri board, we don't know, or no. Yeah, we're going to have to regroup on that one. Okay. Sounds good. Right. We'll call meeting adjourned. Yeah. Cool. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. Thanks. Right. Great night.